Bleh. Don't let me forget that. So you want a fast car, but you're sick and tired of all the fast and the fun cars out there having inflated price tags and putting them out of your reach because they have that kind of, they have that hype tax. <laughs> Supra Type R. But what if I told you there was a handful of cars produced in the last 20 years that make a sassy 400 horsepower or even more that fly completely under the radar and can be had for a ridiculous $10,000 or even less. That's right, guys. This is a list of 400 horsepower cars for under $10,000 and make sure to stick around for the last car on this list because it has two turbos, 12 cylinders, damn near 600 foot pounds of torque, and it's going to blow your freaking mind for $10,000. So call your bank, round up some cash because we're going to talk about some cars that are capable of some insanely impressive performance for very reasonable money. And you're not going to be able to live another second without having one of these in your arsenal. But before we dive right in, make sure you're subscribed. It helps us out a ton. And a huge thank you to the 664,371 of you who are already subscribed. We upload literally every single day and you're not going to want to miss any of the fun or the giveaways. And this time, for the first time ever, you actually have three different chances to win. First place is going to win a set of Fortune Auto Coilovers and a set of Artisan wheels. And we're going to wrap those wheels in Continental tires. The second winner is going to get a set of artists of their choice. And the third winner is going to get a $200 gift card. And we're doing all this to raise money for Reach Out Worldwide, which is a charity organization that aids in disaster relief by not only helping clean up and supply materials to help rebuild build, but also with medical care to treat chronic conditions related to that disaster and supply MREs and water filtration devices to affected communities. So if you want to help out a badass charity, get some sick apparel and get entered in for a chance to win wheels, tires, suspension, and then another set of wheels and a gift card, head over to fitmentindustries.com to get entered now. Let's get started. Well, 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 what a surprise we're starting this list off with a naturally aspirated V8 from a domestic motor vehicle company. But can you guess which one? I'm of course talking about the sixth generation 2000 the 2010 Dodge Charger SRT8, also known as the LX platform. When the Charger came out, it was a huge success. A full-size domestic luxury-oriented sports sedan that was also a friggin' cop car. Now, sport-oriented might be kind of pushing it because these things are heavy, but they did make a performance variant where they took their largest gas engine, a 6.1 liter Hemi from the Challenger SRT8, and tossed that thing into their full-size sedan, and in doing so, could push this 4,100 pound lard to 60 in just five seconds flat and pull mid-13s in the quarter mile, which in 2006 was a pretty damn healthy number. Plus, it had a big bulging hood scoop and boasted bright red Brembo's to let everyone know you weren't driving the base model. I mean, when these things came out, they had over 120 more horsepower than a Mustang GT. And its only other real performance sedan competition was a Mercedes E55 AMG that costed more than twice as much. This thing was the definition of American muscle upon release, and they sold extremely well. They made over 15,000 of these damn things and way, way more regular variations, making these cars affordable to buy and then simultaneously cheap to own, making them kind of disposable for lack of a better term. Anyway, these cars today can easily be had for eight to ten thousand dollars with higher miles making it a fantastic candidate on this list of 400 horsepower cars for under ten thousand dollars the next one on this list is a real secret that not a lot of people know about the first generation cadillac cts-v now i know you're probably like bruh that's no secret but let me explain the big misconception for this era of general motors ls cars is that the 350 horsepower 5.7 liter ls1 made its way into the early v1 cars much like that of its GTO of the same year. The assumption is strong enough to drive the price down on the 5.7 liter V cars, but contrary to popular belief, the 5.7 liter in the early V1s is actually the C5 Corvette Z06's 400 horsepower LS6. Nobody really knows exactly why they even switched over to the six liter with the same exact horsepower. It's little gems like this that make lists like this one possible. This is a 400 horsepower manual transmission only Cadillac freaking race car. Sure, it has fairly dated design and has a really awkward six lug bolt pattern so finding wheels is damn near impossible. But if you search by your make and model on fitmentindustries.com, it's gonna show you all your six lug wheel options. Anyway, unlike some of the other cars on this list, the V variant was actually produced to handle. Although this is unlike Cadillac traditionally and disappointed some of their customers looking for that luxury ride quality, it did allow this chunky sedan to be one of the better handling sports sedans of its generation. And to say this is the domestic interior version of the E39 M5 is pretty damn well known as a fact. Now, these cars do demand pretty premium money, but they are 
depreciated as hell. High mile early examples can be seen in the eight to $9,000 range, but they really do kind of hover right at that $10,000 mark. If you desire a manual transmission more than you do interior quality, these cars are a no brainer. An honorable mention here would be the six liter CTSV and even the six liter GTO. Both cars are in that 400 horsepower realm and they just barely miss that $10,000 mark, but they're very close. <laughs> this is I love talking about. I'm such a nerd for this <laughs> the next one on this list is a 5 Series BMW that not a ton of people aren't even aware actually exists. For the F10 generation, there's actually a trim between the 300 horsepower 535i and the 560 horsepower M5 called the 550i. The 550i is powered by the notoriously unreliable N63 4.4 liter twin turbo V8. Coincidentally, it was actually the first twin turbo engine that used the hot V layout and also BMW's first twin turbo V8 period. So that is obviously a recipe for disaster. But when these cars aren't consuming timing chains and gallons of oil per minute, you have a 400 horsepower, 450 foot pounds of torque, luxury performance sedan. In fact, when new, a lot of articles about the car boasted about how the car sparked joy in the same way that an E39 M5 did, especially since you could option in and get this, a manual transmission. This was basically your last chance to get a cool car with the manual transmission before they got killed off. And if you didn't buy these new, you're pretty much the reason manual transmissions are dying. So anyway, it didn't really matter. Manual variants are almost never gonna get into that $10,000 range. And the automatic is a pretty damn good one. These cars use that ZF8 speed, which is both strong, but also used in all BMW models from the V12 760 all the way down to the one series and they seem to be pretty damn reliable and cost friendly. Sure, the car might eat up a timing chain and you have to replace the whole entire engine, but I found these as cheap as $7,000, and most of them do have the customer care package service bulletin completed, which is a fancy way of saying giant engine recall, and consisted of a full engine inspection that, if problems were found, they would replace fuel injectors, MAFs, crankcase ventilation lines, fuel pressure sensors, and even its timing components, and could take up to 40 hours of later to complete. So if you can find one of these for a good price, with documentation of that service, you're really getting a ton of car for the money. I think you knew damn well we weren't gonna make it through this list without mentioning a Mustang, but arguably one of the most historically significant Mustangs in the last 30 years. Get the f out of here. But arguably one of the most significant Mustangs in the last 30 years, the 2011 and 2012 model years, because for 2011, the Mustang actually got Ford's new five liter Coyote engine, pushing a massive at the time, 412 horsepower from a V8 with a very aggressive power curve, thanks to its variable valve timing and significantly helped pave the way for the modern horsepower war. Much like apparently everything else on this list so far, you're pulling a zero to 60 in just under five seconds and doing really low 13s in a quarter mile. And despite the car still using a live, rear Rear axle rear suspension design, the cars handled significantly better than the first half of the S197 generation and were very competitive on track in its class as well. Now, the 11 to 12 Mustangs did get the five liter Coyote, but what really depreciated these cars to be able to be had for $10,000 is that there was a facelift in 2013 that got all kinds of very well needed upgrades. Projector Xenon headlights with LED running lights and those oh so sexy LED black tail lights that got that black decal between them. They look gobs better than the 11 and 12s and lots of people pay extra money for those, leaving the 11 to 12 Mustangs that are largely identical mechanically out to dry, making it a fantastic performance bargain. Next up is a car that is very near and dear to my heart, not only because I own one, but because it's genuinely one of the best performance bargains on the market right now with a 470 horsepower, 500 16 foot pounds of torque supercharged 5.4 liter v8 all while massaging your tushy of course i'm talking about the 2003 to 2006 w211 chassis mercedes-benz e55 amg now i'm gonna go ahead and get those someone right out in the open between the car's nearly 20 year old air suspension and the less than numb steering feel the car surely handles like the 4200 pound sedan that it is but this thing is as close to a Hellcat as you're gonna get for a ridiculously low sum of money. As a matter of fact, this exact chassis and suspension design was used to create the platform the Chargers and the Challengers sit on. They used the same transmission that was used in the early SRT8 cars, and the company that produced the superchargers for the Hellcat is the same one that supplied and engineered the supercharger for the Bonkers E-Class. Anyway, these cars dominated the streets in stock form and can genuinely hold their own with a lot of more modern, more expensive cars. Sure, it's 
a 15 year old Mercedes, but it still does the quarter mile in mid to high 12 second range and hauls ass to 60 and 100 miles an hour quicker than a $225,000 V12 Ferrari 575. That's insane for any sedan, let alone one you can buy right now for under $10,000. Now, the massaging seats with active bolsters, push button start, vented seats and nearly 500 horsepower does come at a cost. There are some known electrical gremlins that come with all of that, like seat control modules that never turn off and drain the battery, or air bladders that split open in the seats, then you don't get the massaging anymore, or the fluid filled motor mounts that can only take so much abuse from all that torque. However, the drivetrain itself is extremely stout, unlike its more expensive head bolt eating 63 AMG cousin and takes very well to modifications as well. If you're looking for a comfortable daily driver that's also going to do rolling burnouts getting on the highway and then never go around the corner, this one is for you. These cars can be had for as low as $6,000 with higher miles, but get on these now because the prices are starting to go up dramatically for the well-sorted ones and the cheaper ones are going to follow. I really didn't want to put two Mercedes on this list, but God damn it, this one is just too insane to not talk about. So get this, for $10,000, you can buy a 490 horsepower, 5.5 liter twin turbo V mother 12, and that turns out an earth shattering 590 foot pounds of torque. What? These are huge numbers with all the cylinders, two friggin' turbos, but maybe the largest number of all goes to its 4,600 pound curb weight. The 2003 to 2006 W220 Mercedes-Benz S600 is a big, heavy, luxurious, rocket-powered land yacht, okay? Radar cruise control, the same massaging seats from before, but now even the rear seats power recline heat and cool your tushy while literally murdering just about anything on the road because 600 foot pound of torque turbo V12. Mustangs, murdered. Camaros, left in the dust. GTRs, embarrassed. But the styling did quickly become outdated here and Mercedes was having a small quality crisis at the same time, trying to make the S-Class more affordable and leaving it to be one of the least desirable S-Classes in the current moment taking the price with it. The S600 had a starting price of $124,000, but now you can buy these cars for less than 10% of that starting price, and they pop up every now and again for a solid seven to $10,000, and can be had for even cheaper when the car needs some coil packs, which is a solid $2,600 job, if you do the labor yourself, because you can't actually change just one coil. Each bank is one large unit of six coil packs to the tune of $1,300 a pop. And if you only change the one side, the other one is just a ticking time bomb. You may as well change the plugs too, but you know, there's 24 of them. So that's another quite large expense. Anyway, if one of these cars has a misfire, it's probably these coil packs, but maybe the coolest part about these cars is the way that they make that power. With relatively small turbos and 12 cylinders, these things make peak torque at a diesel-like 1800 RPM through that 3500 RPM range. And with no other modifications, uploading an ECU tune from Rentec, and you're gonna pick up an absolutely stupid 130 horsepower and 150 foot pounds of torque for a grand total of 625 horsepower and 745 foot pounds of torque. What? This is the cheapest way to make huge power by a long shot. But that about wraps it up for this list of big horsepower bargains, making 400 horsepower for less than 10,000 friggin' dollars. Let me know what horsepower bargains are your favorite and make sure to follow me on Instagram at seanb.fi if you are a horsepower fan. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. It helps us out a ton. And go ahead and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. It helps us get in front of other car enthusiasts like yourself. I'm Sean from Fitment Industries. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. 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 Why? Why are you like this? Oh, that's fucking gross. So we just have to do these.